part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Nevermind the Furthermore, your morning dose of creative conversation and coffee with your host, Brian K. Morris, independent publisher, freelance hybrid author, award-winning playwright, Facebook famous YouTuber, and former mortician's assistant. Get ready to start your day off right. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to a problem written, uh, never by the furthermore, for Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. Uh, for our YouTube uh, uh, patrons, sorry, but um, somehow my YouTube link dropped out during the night. But we are back on YouTube again. So this is the only way I may be caught up with your comments because uh, we are uh, going to have special guests in about half an hour. And that's Dan Doherty. We've had him on before for... Um, uh, he was the writer of uh, Floppy Cop, one of the funniest graphic novels I've read in ages. And uh, today he'll be talking about uh, the wrap up to his series Touching Evil, that will be um, that is currently um, happening on uh, Kickstarter. So anyway, glad you all are here, and thank you for uh, putting up with the uh, fall to roll. Anyway, uh, let's get our gratitude out of the way here. First of all, let's. Uh, Say a thank you to our uh, usual sponsor, Jeffrey Hayes, and Plasma Fire Graphics. Plasma Fire Graphics, when the look of your book matters to you. When you've put your heart and soul into the interior of your book, you want the exterior to look every bit as shiny. Well, you want a spiffy job done, then you get a hold of Jeffrey Hayes at PlasmaFireGraphics.com because they do it all. They not only can create a wraparound cover for you with copy and trade dress and everything, they can also... You know, uh, they can also uh, give you graphics that will help you sell that book on social media, as well as a beautiful, beautiful book trailer. That's who we use for our book trailers, and we think you should too, because he's way, way affordable. Uh, so check out his rates. Go to his go to the Plasma Fire Graphics Facebook page, as well as the PlasmaFireGraphics.com page, and that's where you can contact Jeffrey Hayes directly. Plasma Fire Graphics, when the look of your book matters to you, because it sure as heck matters to your readers. And I uh, want to thank Joe Dog McKeel for helping us reestablish that um, that uh, YouTube link. And sorry, uh, uh, we didn't know about it. We didn't. We don't check these things. <laughs> but anyway, we're on the air, and we're grateful that you are here, whether you're watching us on the rerun or live. And also, want to give a shout out to our Patreon patrons. Patreon is a monthly subscription service where you can subscribe to your favorite creators, and many of the people you see on the screen here have their own pages, so please check them out as well. But you get something for your supporting me. So if you want to find out what it is, aside from having your name on all of our broadcasts and in our publications, then uh, check us out at www.patreon.com forward slash Brian K. Morris. We are a proud part of the Rising Tide Broadcast Network, a, a group of like-minded broadcasters who are helping each other rise while providing quality content to you. And, uh, Let's see, today is Wednesday, so tonight that means it's the Truth Mongers with Ted Davies and Glenn B. Fleming. Don't miss that show. It is always thought-provoking and fun. And also don't forget to start your mornings out with Michaela Jade's Morning Motivationals, as well as the BK Minutes, seven days a week for me, five days a week for her. We have got your entertainment and information covered all week long, so please check us out. And don't forget Thursday nights is Comic Book Spectrum with myself, Eric Hawkins, Clyde Hall, and Brian Rodman, where we discuss the latest comic books and uh, give some reviews. 
news and some views on the industry. And we have a feeling we're going to be talking about Superman this week because everyone's got their panties in a bunch about that. So anyway, actually, some people are applauding uh, the new move about Superman while others are absolutely horrified. And we are here to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. So, so please tune in Thursday nights at 7 p.m. as we put the screws to those who deserve it. Anyway. If you don't know where we come in on this issue, then you'll you'll want to tune in and find out. Anyway, well, let's get to your comments. And uh, like I said, at the bottom of the hour, we're expecting Dan Doherty. And he's going to be talking about uh, his career in cartooning, his um, Patreon uh, Beardo strip, and also um, uh, anything that you guys have on your mind. So please, we will read all relevant comments once he shows up and get maybe get your questions answered because this guy's got a great career and uh if you want to emulate it uh whether you're a writer or artist or broadcaster or what this is this is your golden opportunity and there is grant liker good morning to you good to see you and don't forget uh memoirs of the morbid is still funding on kickstarter and he's about a third of the way to his goal so please check it out it's a great great book and i'm in it too and good morning michaela jade Mwah. glad to see you darling and couldn't find it on youtube this morning for some reason it's there now and uh sarah sarah glad you found us Mwah. good morning my dear hope all is going well and let's catch up with your comments here and good morning ted davies artistry hey carl and i will be sporadic since he's helping joe dog and john cover captain kirk's first flight into real space that's right we have shot captain kirk before he was even born into space oh my gosh riverside iowa must be must be buzzing right about now but anyway yes if you're gonna leave me go to see joe dog mckeel and armchair rocket science right now it is a great show, and if I weren't here, that's where I would be. Uh, so please check that out. It's always informative, always fun, and very exciting. And hello, beautiful people. I bet you're Keisha Acuff, mwah, who's pretty beautiful herself. Hope you're doing well this morning, and good morning, Brian, and evermore. It's Teresa. Glad to see you here, mwah, and Historical Fencing Guild, Nicholas Anthony Dockard. Good morning, all, as my net and phone dropped out this morning. Oh, man, I hope... I hope uh, hope all is better. Hope you put a Band-Aid on. Good morning, Jessica Johnson. Mwah. Good to see you, darling. And hello, Donna Carly Carly. Mwah. Glad to see you. And morning all from the Desmond Small Press Publisher, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 p.m. Central uh, on the Rising Tide Broadcast Network. Check out his great show on Saturday night. It is so cool. Also, check out uh, uh, Heroes for Kids out of Perryville, Missouri. Great group of cosplayers helping the kids in the community with their superpowers of cosplay. And they are wonderful. It is good to see you here, darling. And Rick Bradley, it's always good to see you here, too, darling. Mwah. Good morning, never morning. It's good morning to you, Rick Bradley. And also check out the Heroes for Kids convention next year. I will be there. It is going to be a lot of fun. And thank you for sharing this, Ryan Permison. You are an angel in disguise. And also uh, check him out Saturday at noon while I'm at um, Dead Con in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He will be broadcasting live with Keisha Acuff, artist and writer. She is awesome and beautiful. You want to check that out on his uh, Nerd Culture channel, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll catch it on the rerun. Happy Wednesday, Nerd Mornings. How are you? Hope you're doing well, Ryan. And we just had a comment dump. That means we're doing it right. And they have been bothering you, too, about the Jonathan Kent issues. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the people who, I, I think they're the people who, uh, uh, also got their, um, uh, shorts in a wad, so to speak, about the uh, trunks going <laughs> going away um, back in the new 52. Yeah, they are losing their minds, and um, you can imagine where I stand on it. <laughs> so it's, it's glorious to see. Sometimes fandom needs a little shake up every now and then, and this is the, you know, this is the sort of thing that uh, we're, go we're definitely going to be talking about. <laughs> it's going to be fun. But I imagine you're as besieged with comments, and and uh, very few people have liked my comments so far. <laughs> um, yeah, you can imagine. Anyway, Eric, because I am an ally. <laughs> so, and Eric Hawkins, good morning to you, brother. Hope you're doing well this morning. Thinking of you, man. And Ryan Permison, subscribe to the Nerd Culture channel for great nerdy content, interviews, and content that you will be delighted with. And from that, and good morning <laughs> to everyone from the Desk of Small Press Publisher. And if you can find a link to ARS, I can't. Um, I'm a little busy, but I would do it for you, Donna. I really would. And uh, But I, I'm sure it's on Check Joe Dog McKeel's page on Facebook. And good morning. What kind of music do mummies like listening to on Halloween? Rap music. 
<laughs> I love it. Thank you, Ace. And Cookie gave you a thumbs up on that one. So Madam Executive Producer approves. And I hope Captain Kirk doesn't bring back space herpes and turn us all into zombies. Let's that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous thing. And I don't know if it was Photoshop, but I noticed somebody had a shot of him with his crewmates, and he, of course, was wearing standard colors, and they were all wearing red. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, <laughs> that's a bad sign. And Anthony Bavo, good to see you. I'll see you this weekend at Dead Con. And hi, everyone. How are all of you guys? We are doing well. Hope you're the same. And Sarah, Sarah, I'll definitely have to watch tomorrow evening. I have no clue what you're talking about with Superman in real space as opposed to pretend space. I'm so confused fuse this morning uh spacex is launching actor and writer and director william shatner into space for reels and uh the launch should be happening right about now in real time and uh uh he will not only uh set um uh, a record as the first actor into space and i wouldn't be surprised if he tells him to take warp speed or something or use impulse power around the earth uh but anyway he uh, is also going to be the oldest man um who uh will enter space he's about 90 years old but we all know he is ageless and jessica johnson's gonna be having fun at the chester falls set festival this sunday we all will have fun but we're gonna have a lot of fun now because we have coming with us let me get this two screen here going here so we can bring on the one the only the delightful the, the lovely dan doherty dan how are you <laughs> i'm feeling the lovely how are you brad <laughs> Well, we we are getting past the morning kerfluffles just so the rest of the broadcast can be flawless for once. So anyway, uh, it's good to have you here, man. I yeah, good to be back. Good to see you. How are you? I am doing well. I am doing well. And uh, I see you've got a new uh, Kickstarter there that is, you've already made your funding. Yeah, we funded it. In, in, yeah, thanks. It was, uh, we funded in 12 hours, which was wow. uh, really cool to walk into like, because I, I left the next day for New York Comic Con, and uh -huh. it was nice to not have to be like stressing, looking at my phone. <laughs> did I did I make it? Did I make it? And I was like, yeah. no. that was over. So <laughs> okay, so now that you've done that, what are what is your fresh stress on this now? <laughs> oh, it's always stressful. Everyone, anyone who's ever done a Kickstarter knows, you know, it's like it, you set a goal that is like the you know the reasonable goal, but mm -hmm. there's a lot more um, costs and and whatnot that go into these things. So. Yeah, I mean, honestly, so that was 10K was the goal, was the original goal. We're up to, uh, I think, 14 and a half right now. $14,641. I feel like I'm on the telephone now that I'm giving the total there. So <laughs> well, congratulations, Dan. That's Thanks. That is very cool. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to suspend the comments for just a moment here while okay. Dan takes a sip of uh, ambition there. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to give you the whole screen, Dan. You know the drill. Tell everyone who you are and why you are so amazing. <laughs> um, well, I don't know about that, but uh, my name is Dan Doherty. Uh, I am a writer and illustrator of comics and kids books, and um, I am uh, an illustrator on several children's books that come out, uh, A Thousand Nose, Do You Speak Fish, uh, Sam and the Jungle Band. Uh, I'm also probably best known for my comic strip, Beardo, which is a slice of life uh, look at poking fun of it at adulthood. Um, and then um, oh, I love that the little the little machine is running in the background. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then um, I have uh, a series, uh, actually award-winning series called Touching Evil. Um, these are actually the first two hardcovers that uh, collected volumes one and two of Touching Evil. There's that one, it's shiny. Um, and uh, it's a supernatural thriller about a woman who's given a curse that allows her to kill anyone she touches, but only if they're evil. And she has no idea who's evil unless she touches them. So it's a very um, high on psychological horror kind of suspenseful story where this woman becomes a reluctant hero um, and is constantly faced with, with bad people who either want to take the curse from her or uh, want to um, manipulate her into using it against her will. Um, it's really fun. Like, I, I know it sounds like crazy, but, um, it, people who read it, they, they almost treat it like a television show. They think that it's like, you know, something I got to binge the next episode. I got to binge the next uh, issue. And so, um, what I'm putting out there is binge worthy content is the third and final, uh, book in the trilogy, uh, touching evil Volume three, the depths of vengeance. 
Um, it's going to be a 240 page hardcover. Um, and it will round out this story and finish and conclude um, the Ada Mansfield story, the, the main character. Um, so that's what this Kickstarter is about. It's really kind of like closing the book, you know, pun intended, on um, a 21 issue run of Touching Evil. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And you are in the right audience where you can use the word fun in conjunction with a woman who touches people and they die. Yes. So anyway, <laughs> you have found your tribe here. So anyway, folks, if you're interested in this, please check it out. I know I'm going to be uh, arguing with my wife about my Kickstarter budget about it. Uh, so anyway, please check out this link and check out uh, what Dan's got on uh going on Facebook there. And uh, we'll try to get, acknowledge as many of you as possible uh, during this broadcast. But please, please, please. And Sarah, Sarah, you are so welcome. That's why we're here. Uh, Sarah, you're always looking for um, recommend. Sarah is a newly minted comic book fan. Oh, nice. And she especially <laughs> likes the dark stuff, the horror. And um, this sounds like it's right up your alley. And uh, Sarah, let's get together. We'll talk about how you can order this thing. All right. And interested in everything Dan is doing. Great guest choice. Well, Dan reached Thank out you. to me and he's a buddy. So I said, okay, let's do this thing. So, because we had so much fun uh, doing um, uh, Clever Tile Pending a couple of months ago for Floppy Cop. Yeah, that one really well. I love Floppy Cop. I, I'm serious. I have not laughed out loud at a comic story in ages, but that <laughs> one got me rolling. And my wife, who I will read passages of things I find amusing, and then she starts looking for the marriage certificate, wondering what her <laughs> life choices. Um, we don't exactly sync up of our humor. <laughs> sort of escape clause in the bylines, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's planning your exit st strategy, but um, she, you know, she. I would read the some of the passages to her, and she'd be like laughing out loud, and you know, hey, that's funny, that's clever. And it's like I'll let you read the whole thing, oh, you know. So, which means that she would have to admit that I'm right about things. So oh, you know, God, that's no. not gonna. Happen. No, no. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Madam Executive Producer from the next room just screamed out, never. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, <laughs> folks, you got a great opportunity to interview Dan here, so please give us your questions. And real fast, if you don't mind, I'm going to uh, acknowledge some people here. Uh, sure. Brian Rodman, our co-host on Comic Book Spectrum. Good morning, my fellow Brian. Uh, and never more, and hope you're having a fantastic week, everyone. Last night, the Dastardly Dingoes was sat down with the Eric Hawkins to talk about a story in Hell Osby came so zombie full head over to that site and check it out and uh let's see here we go and yeah we were talking about we were we're gonna we have our thursday night show on comics comic book spectrum and we have a feeling that the elephant in the room is going to be the news on superman so oh um, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what's, what's the problem now people are upset because he's what bisexual is it yeah he's, he's uh they are going to reveal in the latest issue of superman son of kal-el yeah that uh john the son is bisexual okay <laughs> that's what you yeah. Yeah. tell me what i'm supposed to be upset <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. It's like holy cats. Is there something yeah, else he did? Like, did he murder someone? <laughs> yeah. Well, he hasn't done that in about fifteen years. But anyway, no. Um. Yeah. I. Yeah. I. I did a quick search yesterday on Facebook, and I despair for humanity because uh, it's like no one reads anything past the uh, headline, of course, yeah. and everyone's like, "Oh, he's ruined Superman." I. I haven't bought Superman in twenty years, but I'm buying him now. You know, it's like right. Oh no, we. <laughs> Lost another customer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, him and a hundred thousand others. Um, yeah. yeah, and yeah, then Rick Bradley says a lot of people think it's Superman himself. And my thought, my thought is, I don't care who you smooch. It's yeah. like, <laughs> and well, Bobby Nash. Good morning to you, my brother. <laughs> good to see you. And space herpes. Did I hear that right? Yes, <laughs> you did. Another another phrase that you're more likely here on this show than any other. <laughs> Is it simplex A or B? I mean, which one? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. 
we're, with oh, Kirk, we're going God. straight to like X or Y, you know, this is stuff wow. science doesn't even have a, a name for, much less a cure. And Brian Robin says, so this morning I had to block, block a grumble of a man who decided to hate on the fact that I advertised for my Kickstarter campaign. How else is one supposed to get the word out, you moron? <laughs> I think we all agree on that one. Yeah. I started to converse with him and said, I realized that this wouldn't help anything, so I just blocked him. And that's basically a frown upside down. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. Um, you know, it, what's the old phrase? Uh, Never try to teach a pig to sing. It wastes your time and it annoys the pig. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> and Brian Raman says, well, if it isn't Beardo himself, hey there, Dan, congrats on the Kickstarter, bro. Yeah, thanks, Brian. How are you? Uh, it's been uh, since I think the last time we were on the show, right? The last time I, I talked to you. I think so, yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, and your partner in crime uh, on Floppy Cop, Seth DeMoose, did the variant cover for Brian's uh, Nebulizer comic. Oh, nice. I Okay, this almost kind of proves a point of mine, which is that I didn't know that Brian had a Kickstarter, and I'm sure he's talking it up, and... I just, you know what I mean? Like it's, I, social media has been really tough as far as breaking through the the noise and seeing somebody's work. Um, is it still going? Is this Kickstarter going? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, Memoirs of an Angel issue eight uh, has made its goal. Um, $2,500 goal by uh, $139. He's up to 82 awesome. backers and uh, he has, still has 18 days to go. So and I will I will make it 83 in a second here. All right. Well, well, you need that link, Dan? I've got a link if you need it. Yes, actually send me a link. Okay, hold on here. I'll give everyone a link. Everyone, you get a link. You get a link. Everyone gets a link. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna um <laughs> I'm gonna put it um I'm gonna put it in the private chat. Will that help you? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put it in there. Yes, we have a private chat. No, we don't talk about you people, it's not all about you. Anyway, um, so there you go, Dan. Got All it. right. See, Brian, we got you. We okay, we got we got you a subscriber, Brian. Okay, Dan, that's all. Goodbye. Anyway, no. Um, <laughs> that was the whole point of it. <laughs> I can give Brian one more goal. backer that I made my goal. <laughs> that's right. My job. But definitely check out Dan's too while you're at it. And um, let's see, let's get this link up for Brian while we're at it. So everyone can get in on it. And uh, we're going to be flipping around here. And Brian Raman says, uh, well, my goodness, thank you, Dan. I really appreciate that, my friend. Oh, my pleasure. I get, yeah, I mean, had I seen it earlier, and that's that's kind of my point. Like, man, yeah. it's, it's tough to, you know, cut through the crowd. Um, it's, people shouldn't be complaining about people, uh, you know, talking about their Kickstarter because you, it's, it's not fun on this end either. Sometimes you have to keep every day – bringing it up in some fashion on something and it's work. I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, it's not like you're begging for money. You are creating a product that people can pre-order and also um, feel special about because they made it happen. And on top of that, they probably got something that nobody else is going to get unless they were part of the campaign. So yeah, I'm glad you said something. No. And I'm glad you said something about wanting to come over here. Yeah. Um, because otherwise I might not have noticed because, you know, you try to follow certain people. You're one of the people I try to stalk. And it's like, um, you know, all of a sudden it's like, I'm going through my messages and then you pop up and say, Hey, I've got a Kickstarter. You mind coming on if I come on the show? And I'm like, you got a Kickstarter. Cool. Well, I saw that drone outside with the Fez hat on and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Why did he put a hat on it? It's so weird. It, it identifies him very clearly. <laughs> it does. I, you know, this, all that CIA training just out the yeah. window. You know? <laughs> really? We don't talk about that. That's yeah, we don't talk about. That. I, I skipped that day, but uh, in class, but uh, but no, you know, you raise an interesting point. You know, and we have another guy, Grant Lankard, who's got a Memoirs of the Morbid book going. Um, I've got a story in there, and we'll put your, your link up to Grant. But um, how do you pierce? You know, the, we you know twenty years ago we talked. I keep saying we talked about signal versus noise, right? And there is so much freaking noise out there with um, you know who's smoo Superman smooching. You know what's the latest products? What's this idiocy going on in the news and politics and religion, etc.? How yeah. do you get through all that? I mean, I don't have a great answer because I'm still, you know, so always trying to swim upstream with some of this stuff. Um, you know, I definitely try to keep a, 
pretty healthy um, amount of content on my social media. So people know that it's not like a dead page or it's not something that, you know, is not worth checking out. Um, to be honest, you know, one thing that I really like, and not to shamelessly plug another thing that I'm doing, but I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking truthfully here. Um, so I have a Patreon and it's for Beardo, but I also put a lot of my other stuff on there because I, I kind of juggle several different uh, projects at the same time. So initially when I was starting it, it was meant for like three strips a week for Beardo. But I realized I'm like, you know, these people are paying into this. This It, it, it started to become like a little community. Um, and I was like, this is kind of awesome because there's no more like wondering if they saw it. You know, it's like they get an email every time I post directly to their, their account, not going as spam or anything like that. And so... I started posting basically almost every day. Like everyone on my Patreon is like, you know, you you have probably the most content I've ever seen out of a Patreon. You know, if they were people who are regular backers. Um, so that has been awesome because when I started talking about touching evil on there, I immediately and I said like, here, go to the link and hit notify me on launch. Like, you know, I had like over a hundred people ready, locked and loaded to go on the thing. So on day one, you know, it was. It was moving. It was, the, the needle was moving really fast. It, I hit the 10K goal in 12 hours, and I think it was because I had that direct channel with Patreon, um, and I have a, a healthy um, and awesome fan base. You know, but it's it's tough. It's like I've been doing this for like almost 20 years now. I started professionally in like 2003, so you know, it's still like. It, it, it's it's never like uh, oh you've got it all figured out it's like it's always changing. Yeah, and you know um, one of the things that brought me to Patreon was I was talking to a friend of mine. I don't know if you know him, Francesco. He's yeah, an yes, I do. Yes, yeah, he's a he's an old buddy of mine. And uh, um, when I was first toying with Patreon, and he he told me about how people choose to be there. In fact, they're paying for the privilege. Yeah, and you have probably a different relationship with um the people who subscribe to you um uh, in that they want to be there they are genuinely interested in what you're doing as opposed to having say a facebook business page yeah. which is useful yeah and it is a way to get uh, the word out but um the engagement is so much greater on the patreon again because they are financially invested in you and your success yeah, and they can't like like Patreon is not going to filter me out, you know, or or create some sort of algorithm that's going to like all of a sudden um, keep me away from the people who subscribe to me. Whereas, like, I'll give you another example. Um, I have a Facebook page for Beardo. It's got like I think fourteen thousand people on it. I don't have fourteen thousand people buying my stuff on a regular basis. I, if I did. Uh, I would be in a rocket ship uh, up there with Jeff Bezos, uh, and, <laughs> and I would be uh, uh, shooting down your drone <laughs> that you've been using to stalk me. Um, That's right. So like with that, buddy. <laughs> yeah, like I see <laughs> the thing is crafty. It's a really crafty drone. Um, no, but I see I see the the data on that thing on that on that bureau page, and like I'll post something that I think is you know definitely good content, and a lot of. Well, I mean, most of those people don't ever get to see it. They just, it's not in their, their scrolling, you know, their day-to-day -day search. So yeah, Patreon have, has that more direct channel. And it's fun too, because like I, I blog in there, like every time I post, I'll, I'll talk a little in there and just, you know, make, kind of show, you know, the human side of doing this sort of thing. And then the comments section is really fun. You know, people go like, oh yeah, yeah. My, you know, my dog ran away too one time. Or like, uh, I remember when my kids were that age and we have like a, a legit, human interaction through um this you know this this uh, portal for art mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that beep, 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 beep. it's the little robot that is uh cleaning my floor <laughs> okay <laughs> or it's your drone it could be your drone it could be my drone yeah um, you need to put batteries in that drone right <laughs> i do man I, I i've got to add to the extension cord is what it is uh so anyway <laughs> anthony bavosa is definitely see you at dead con brian be safe getting there and back for you too my friend we will see you there this weekend and uh let's see oh and brian Raman, we're going to post your thing here for rest for uh 
for uh, Memoirs of an Angel number eight. Please check that out. It is a fantastic series. And let's see, Sarah, Sarah. And Sarah also made a comment that she likes your the color of your room. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this is my office now. Um, I think since the last time we did the interview, I've moved, right? I think you were. We, yeah, oh. that's right. I think you were. Yeah. I want to say you were in the process of moving. Yes, I, yeah. I think so. Because that was around the time the Floppy Cock Kickstarter was going. Um, we were selling our place and moving to a new place. I love my office now. Like, I don't ever want to leave it. So this is <laughs> this is like my favorite place to be right now. It's really great. So it's all. So it's got like either a toilet or a bucket or a hail pail in there. Right? <laughs> I've got three windows. You should know what's here. You got the. <laughs> I got three windows, so I I can choose my own adventure. You know, do I want to pee out that window today, or do I want to pee out that window? Which neighbor will I uh, uh, pee at the most? <laughs> So if you ever want to find out where Dan lives, just look for this golden stream coming yeah. out of one of the windows right. and, and get you a sample of Dan. <laughs> Take a little Dan home with you. But anyway, <laughs> you're welcome, Sarah. So what? This is how this show goes, honey. It's really my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's brave of you, Dan, to take the blame for it, but unfortunately, it's the host that must uh, shoulder the blame for the usual, <laughs> usual fault or all, but it's good. And Anthony Bavosa, it's a great pleasure to meet you, Dan. Oh, and, nice to meet you, too. And it does sound pretty good. Uh, Anthony, it does sound pretty good. Uh, like I said, uh, Cookie and I are anticipating a fifth, fifth fight later over it. And uh, let's see. And uh, Sarah Sarah says, I take screenshots and pictures of physical comics that crack me up. Michaela Jade says, we're going into her pocket as she goes into work. Uh, makes me happy. Um, and let's see. What else we got here? And um, and my gosh, Brian Ryman, why are you always advertising? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hustle doesn't same. stop. That's why the hustle doesn't stop. Yeah, even yeah, that's that's the one advantage, or used to be the advantage of social media. You put your message up there, and people will see it. But God, it's like, what is the t you know? They used to say that like uh, a the average post on Twitter has like a shelf span of like uh shelf life of like about twenty minutes. Yeah. What would it be for Facebook now? Who knows? Like twenty yeah. seconds feels like you know. It's just constantly, and and so ironically, look, <laughs> a lot of us are complaining about Facebook on Facebook and it's pushing down. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You know, see. And yeah, really. like, it's a so, prophecy. Yeah, yeah. It's well, you know, that's the thing. Facebook in particular, I don't see this, you know, like on so much on Twitter or LinkedIn or any of the other social media, or, uh, maybe a little bit on. Uh, uh, Instagram, since it's owned by the same guy, mm -hmm. um, but it's like the more you promote, the less promotion you get, almost unless you pay for it. Yeah, yeah. I took out an ad for this Kickstarter, and I think it just ended. And you know, it didn't. It, I, I, I think I threw like a hundred dollars in actually, and um, the data they gave me back um, underperformed from what they promised me. And I was like, okay, all right. Was yeah. this you know, it's, it's it's frustrating. Like, but whatever. I mean, that's that's when you. That's why, to me, like those. I'd rather have a small fan base that that really is loyal and loves what I'm doing, than a large one that is fickle and already moving to the next thing. If I could combine those two and have a large one that's super loyal, that would be wonderful. But yeah, um, I'm working on it. Um, I think that's where conventions come in too, right? Like you actually have a human interaction with somebody, and you're more likely to remember them. Um, I mean, that's to me. And I went to New York this past weekend. Um, I, you know, I, I saw my numbers jump up on the Kickstarter because I was actually seeing people go, "Oh, hey, you know, I know you like this book. The third one's out." And they're, oh, cool! And then they just, you know, did it right there. So. If only I could clone myself and just be everywhere at once, that'd be great. <laughs> so what was the rest of your convention season look like? Uh, this weekend, I'm going to Motor City Comic Con in Novi, Michigan, basically Detroit. Um, uh, then I go to Grand Rapids in November. Um, it's, I think, the third weekend in November. And then I close it out with the one-two repop punch of Emerald City in Seattle. And then C2E2 is my hometown show um that's the last show of the year for me so it's nice to like come home and do hopefully a victory lap we will we will see what it looks like but um yeah well i'm hoping to see you at c2e2 i'm hoping to get up there for at least one day so that'd yeah. be cool yeah I mean, I, 
Go ahead. It's the whole time show. It's a, it's it's always a, a favorite, one of my favorites because you know it, I could just roll out of bed and show up. <laughs> <laughs> Saves those uh, pesky uh, hotel costs, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's also got to feel like a reunion, you know. Yeah. Way. Well, it was. I mean, if if people were keeping score, um, it was the last show before the shutdown, um, twenty twenty uh, February twenty twenty. Um, I did that show, and then I think within a week or so, we were we were talking about uh, a shutdown. You know, so. Uh, Emerald City was canceled that year because it was a it was a hot point for um, COVID, and that was that was supposed to be the next show. And so for C2E2, it's almost like we're hopefully we're you know coming full circle and maybe putting some of this behind us by the time we come to uh, December of this year. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> seriously, come on. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> so, and Eric Hawkins, who knows a thing or two about crowdfunding himself of the zombie full world of Oz, a great, great comic book. Well, speaking of crowdfunding and how crappy social media has been lately, what are the best ways to get the word out on crowdfunding projects other than social media? Uh, yeah, I mean, a mailing list helps. Um, you know, one of the things I uh, really push when I'm at conventions uh, not is not just product, but like having that mailing list. And if people are on the fence about buying something, because maybe they just don't want to lug one more thing back to their you know, hotel or they ran out of money or whatever, but they, you know, they're sitting there at your table and if they are interested, but they just can't do it, you know, the, the, the next best thing or the real thing is to say, okay, well, you know, if you, if you want to follow my stuff, it's, you know, just join that list right there. And they do. And then, you know, you add that to your growing database and slowly you're building something that is a little bit more passive, you know, like it's so much easier to blast out an email than it is to go to, you know, 15 shows in a year. Um, so for me, that's, that's one huge thing. And again, like I keep going back to like the human element of it, where it's like, if I see someone on a show and we connect, um, and I'm, you know, I'd rather have one person that I'm connecting with while I, a couple people pass by, but I genuinely c connect with them. Um, then trying to just, you know, snatch and grab every last person and be like, look at my book, look at my book, look at my book. You know, it's like that, that usually means that they, they feel like they're, they're cattle, you know, um, as opposed to feeling like they're a person. So I think, yeah, like go getting out there and, and pounding the pavement helps, but remember that mailing list. Very good advice there. Ted Davies Artistry says, Dan, congrats on all the success, bro. Thank you. They <laughs> said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and it's not like Dan popped up, you know, one day and was instantly successful. You know, it's a process. This is a process. It takes time. <laughs> I'm still, yeah, I'm not fully formed. Uh my fontanelle never closed. There's still <laughs> a large gap here. That's where the hair is. It's it's actually a, a, a helmet shields me. <laughs> Yeah, why do you think I wear this? Yeah, anyway, yeah. So, <laughs> that, uh, was a, that was a white hat when you put it on. The fontanel is just like shooting out. <laughs> exactly. That's where my brains leaked out. Anyway, Brian is only reading comments that are relevant. And as I am rather irrelevant, I guess I should just shut up. No, you shouldn't. And Sarah, Sarah corrects him saying he's reading them at times. So you're not being ignored. And he just have nothing to contribute. Well, thank you for your contribution there. And uh, you are not wasting our time, skunk. I promise. And see, see, people think it's good to see you. And yes, we can see you and comb your hair. Okay. Anyway, it uh, could be a bomb with the beeping duck and cover. And Dan, do you need to duck and cover? Uh, dang it, Sarah beat me to the joke. See, <laughs> you were contributing. Very good, very good. And uh, let's see here. Michaela Jade, author Michaela Jade uh, says, uh, on the thoughts about promoting, I quit I quick worrying. I think he, she meant quit worrying yeah. about over promo when I saw people handing fistfuls of money to a fake homeless guy. <laughs> if people will hand him money and get nothing, why not me? Are you talking about that one, the reporter who did that that story where they pretended to be a homeless person and then they made like the equivalent of in a day, like if, if I made this every day, I'd make like a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I think that's what yeah. you're referring to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not, right? I mean, if you like your stuff, why not be proud of it? Yeah, you know, and I think you know we promote each other on yeah. this network, and it's like. Uh, somebody gave me some great advice because you know I promote other people. I, I've gotten to the point where I suck at promoting myself, and <laughs> um, and somebody said you know you should always promote yourself like you're promoting a friend. 
Yeah, that's a really, that's a super good bit of advice. Um, I have to tell myself that, but I've also, it's easier for me to say that when it's to someone else, right? Like I, I've, I used to teach at a school for comics and they'd ask that and I'd be like, you have to pretend like it's a product that you're selling you, you know, you are something that you have to sell. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's hard to, you know, separate the two things, right? You, the artist in person, you know, you, the human being, but like, yeah, it's, you got to do it. You, yeah, it, it feels weird sometimes, but um, you'll, you'll, you'll get used to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, you treat it like performance art. Yeah. You know, it's just this giant improv. This world is a stage and, uh, you know, everyone within a 20 foot radius is my unwitting co-star. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan Robbins says, what is funny is how to dance around the algorithms on Facebook. I found that self-depreciating memes about my ongoing projects seems to work well. And see now big kiss between these two guys now is why is nobody upset over that you know what i'm saying and brian robin says you hit the nail on the head dan i miss con so much i would have been the large bearded mouth breather at your table cincinnati had i been able to go we could have heckled carrie together and it would have been magical <laughs> <laughs> since he was fun too yeah you should have been there it was really it was it was my first time there and it was uh it was i was very um it's given a very warm welcome. It was very nice. So yeah, maybe next year you can come out and we'll we'll hang out. Very good. And that's only three hours away from me, so I can echo both of you. This will work out. And Glenn B. Fleming. Hey, Brian. Glenn, how are you doing? Check your uh, inbox, sir. Got something for you. And Sarah Sarah does prefer face-to-face. -face. That's good. And Dan says, Glenn Fleming, you should be Superman <laughs> with those blue eyes and all that hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are my mom's eyes. Uh, she can no longer see anything. So <laughs> <laughs> she's going back, damn it. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> yeah. Deal with it, mom. I need them more. Uh and Kayla, you need a sign. We'll write for food. There we go. And uh uh now here's the problem. Uh Sarah Sarah says, I'm trying to get my local comic shop to at least update the web their website to help, but I'm beginning to wonder if I'm wasting energy, which is tough. You know, and we've had this discussion, you know, there's a lot of comic shops out there that still have that 80s thinking about, I will open my doors and the money will come in. Um, yeah. You know, and now, now what kind of, do you have, you know, any sort of penetration into comic shops with your work? Yes, um, I do. Uh, well, since, since um, you know, Touching Evil and Floppy Cop are through SourcePoint Press, um, you know, usually it's like any shop that carries SourcePoint will stock basically like, you know, almost everything that they do. Uh, and I, I've i been, again, doing this for a long time. So, you know, you start making those relationships with, um, you know, the shop owners that are, are, you know, cool, the ones that are actually like, not just, you know, interested in Marvel and DC, but looking at, you know, new stuff or creator owned or indie stuff. And so, yeah, there's a, there's a nice stable of shops that I know that, you know, will, back a project and um or carry the book or you know do anything that they can to you know spread the word and that's also another amazing resource as well you know like my local shop is amazing fantasy uh books and comics and uh, there's like three look yeah there's three locations um and uh I've, I've known them for 30 years probably almost and i've known them since i was a kid because I, I used to go there to shop and then i became uh, part of the the shelf, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of. I mean, I can challengers downtown. Um, there's Chicago comics, comics and more in in uh, Madison Heights. Um, I mean, I can go on and on and on. There's even um, um, com uh, Comic Signal. Um, it's just you start you start seeing these names and you follow them. And if they're doing their job, that means that you know. I think a comic shop now isn't just somebody who sets up shop and lets something happen. Now they're on social media a lot more or their website is a lot more interactive. They're setting up events, signings, all that stuff. It's important. Yeah. Well, you know, it, um, you know, we talk about, you know, like hanging out at the comic shop and having those conversations, Yeah. you know, that are kind of magical and kind of stupid when you get back home and realize, well, what did I spend the last two hours of my life doing? Yeah. But, you know, that's the thing though. A lot of comic shops, don't do that anymore. They don't become the center of uh, fan attention unless they're like promoting magic cards or something like that. And then people complain that there's not enough stuff about comics going on. But uh, yeah, 
you know, I think it's the shops that need to become the focal point for that. And it's got to start on their level rather than wait for somebody else to do it for them. Yeah, the smart ones, the ones that survive, they know how to like adapt and, and also to um, be interactive with their community. Like I, the, in my, you know, I, I could think of many, many, many ones. Like I don't want to leave any out, but I'll just stick to like my local ones. Um, the one here in Frankfurt, uh, Amazing Fantasy, you know, they have a very large space. I actually think that they have the biggest space of the three. And so, yeah, they have like little after hours events that they do there sometimes. They'll host, you know, magic or Dungeons and Dragons uh, tournaments. Um, but they also like curate the shop really nice. You know, like they they make a point of like really making sure that anyone who comes in, whether they're new or, or um, seasoned, can get pointed in the direction of something that they might like, you know, which only benefits us because, you know, we got to cut through the noise of, you know, uh, over a century's worth of comics that people are usually more familiar with. Um, people uh, love what they know. They don't know what they love. You know that thing? Like where where they got to they gotta be told, like, oh, no, this is good. Like, you got to try this. Um, so, good. I mean, my, my buddy up in um, uh, uh, Madison Heights, um, Chris Brown, not to be confused with the singer, um, he's, he's got a shop called Comics and More, and he was one of the reasons why Touching Evil survived in the early years when I was doing single issues and printing them off of my local pr uh, printer. Cause he was like, you gotta, you gotta buy this book. Um, this is a cool book. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe in it. And then he would, you'd flip the book and he had bought the ad on the back. And, um, I mean, that's the sign of like somebody who like puts their money where their mouth is. Like he, he'd helped me basically pay for those little print runs by buying the, the ad space. Um, and now, you know, he's, um, helping me wrap it up. You know, it's like, he's, it's, it's really cool when you have that relationship. And I mean, we're friends now. We weren't, we weren't always friends. It was at first, it was just like, Oh, I like this guy's stuff. Um, but now it's like, it's more than that. I mean, I'm going to see a concert with him next week. That's, that's how much I've got a, a fun relationship with my retailer friends. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. That is so uh, cool. Yeah. yeah and I, I'll, I, I don't mind giving a shout out either. I usually, whenever I'm near Tinley park, I go to the amazing fantasy there. Yeah. That was my that was my hometown shop. Now now that I moved, I'm closer to the Frankfurt one, but I still stop it there too sometimes. I like that one. I do too. And there's a great uh, bakery next door too. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Creative Cakes, yeah. Shout out to Creative Cakes. Yeah, in fact, if we have a business meeting in Chicago with Cookie and I, we tell we don't go to their place anymore. We just tell them, okay, you come to this shop and we'll buy yeah. you coffee or something. But yeah. uh, that way we get more ma more uh, bang for the buck when we travel up there. Um, let's see. And uh, I like it, Carl. In fact, I've kind of done that. I opened an act on Upwork. Okay, good for you. Oh. And uh, Sarah Sarah says, my comic shop has the old hours of operation, which is much shorter than that now, giving people out of the area coming in and are met with a locked door. Uh, yeah, they're open like about three days a week uh, for about three or four hours a day. So, uh -huh. hmm. yeah. And uh, the owner is an awesome guy who I'm thinking is staying with what he's doing for 20 plus years. He's in his comfort zone. But now as a creator, as a business person, Dan, how you have to get out of your comfort zone to actually push up to the next level, don't you? I think so. I mean, you always got to be, you know, pushing yourself a little bit if you want to continue doing these things. Unless, I mean, some people, you know, like the guy who did Garfield is probably in his comfort zone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's probably not moving too far from that uh, that lasagna and Monday uh, uh, shtick. But yeah. uh, for most of us who are kind of trying to, you know, hustle with this, yeah, you always have to be like doing um, whatever comes next, you know, like join in certain social media platforms. Um, I take on projects all the time that, and I actually enjoy it. Like I take on projects that um, are not necessarily uh, flexing the skills that I would be quote unquote known for. You know, like I, um, I have had the pleasure several times now working with uh, Dan Fogler, the actor. Um, we did a couple of stories of his in his Moon Lake anthology. And uh, recently he, uh, he reached out because, you know, one of the stories we had done, he wants to do a follow up and it's a giant, garbage monster fighting um a giant like squid creature um in the waters uh, surrounding brooklyn 
which is not something I'm known for. <laughs> no, it's uh, not your wheelhouse, yeah. Yeah, but uh, man, I loved it. Like it was so fun to just step outside of like what I usually draw and um, tackle something like that was massive. And he was super supportive about it too. Like I, you know, it was it was a short story. It's only four pages when I got it, and I was like, "Hey, can we add a couple pages? Because this is pretty epic." Like he's like, "Yeah, go ahead." You know, so um, oh, I love it. Like I love when I get work that is pushing me into a new area of of basically practice. You know, like you, you know, I, I never, I try to never stop learning if I can. You know, because so, then it gets boring, and then you're not making good work anymore. Exactly, exactly. Damien Waldron says, just popping in to say hi and thank you both for all the information, going back to lurking and skulks back into his life. <laughs> uh, it's good to know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damien, you need to reach out to Dan. Uh, Damien makes his own to uh, action figures. Oh, wow. And oh, he... Yeah, and he made um he made some well let's see I I don't know if I can go across the room and get this uh but anyway um I think I can but yeah he made some figures for Brian Raman okay honey thank you under the shirt there there is the action figure there we go actually bring bring the other one too that is uh very cool uh I met Damien in person recently of um oh toys. <laughs> and if you've seen the nebulizer from Brian. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, that's and, awesome. And with points of artic three points of articulation, which is more than I've got. So uh, <laughs> that's the nebulizer. And he does his own packaging. Wow. See, and the nice thing about this, Dan, um, and I do expect my 10%, Damon. Uh, uh, also, the talent can sign on the back. Nice. And, oh, it gets better, dude. It gets better. It opens up. And uh, I'm not going to do it, but you can remove the figure and put it back in. That's super cool. So it yeah. is always on the card. So just... Um, trying to be the uh, the the deal maker here, so yeah, you guys, talk, you guys need to talk to each other. I'll right? definitely talk to Damien. Yeah, yeah. So, so Damien, uh, tell him I sent you, dude. Anyway, uh, let's see, and and fifteen percent. Oh, that'll work. That'll work. Uh, <laughs> oh, Bobby, I think you just said ten, so we just uh, he just yeah. uh, gave me more. What a bump. There we go. And Ted Davies also, he does uh, action figures for Ted Davies. Uh, Damon Damien does all the action figures for Ted Davies Artistry Properties. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got a lot of questions now. I like yeah, this. And you can have them hand painted and stuff. So it's, you know, he does all kinds of cool things. Wow. So, so, so aren't you glad you showed up, Dan? I am. This is super cool. I always, you know, you know, it was a long time ago. I was talking to a friend of mine who does some, some stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, in, in action figures and um it's not easy like because i know people people were asking about like maybe like a beardo action figure um or man it'd be funny with a floppy cap one uh but that's just what i was thinking yeah you know, that one point of articulation yeah it's, it's back and forth yeah. um <laughs> uh, yeah but like they there was a there was a little rumbling for a while for a beardo action figure but i just it, it was it was a while ago so i wonder if technology is also made things a little bit um more affordable i have no idea but i definitely reach out for sure so if i can get the information i will happily we'll take it. we'll hook you up we'll hook awesome. you up dan i'm here to help anyway uh <laughs> scott cracker asked can i ask relevant irre irrelevant questions brian because that's all i'm about good for let's stop that defeatist talk skunk yeah and, uh, yourself <laughs> Yeah, dude, what, what, you're supposed to be getting assistance for this sort of thing. Uh, Dan, what is your favorite movie? Oh, man. It's tougher for me to pick movies because I have so many movies that I like. I will say my favorite TV show is The Sopranos and always has been. Ah. Um, movie, though, that's a... Mm, it uh, changes like every it, 10 minutes, right? It does. Like, there's yeah. a few that always pop into my head. Um, 
and I never can really settle on one. Like, I, like a lot of Scorsese movies, to be honest, you know, um, I tend to watch Goodfellas, Good, Goodfellas, Goodfellas, Goodfellas. Yes, 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 it, it's pronounced it properly, yes. man. <laughs> the marketing department worked very hard on that title. Yeah, they're like, yes, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes well, I'm I Alistair Sims <laughs> introducing this now. Jeff, Jeff, I look like a clown to you. <laughs> <laughs> get, your, get thine shine box. <laughs> yeah. um, stay tuned after Masterpiece Theater from a word from uh, our marketing department. Uh, have doing, you watched your PBS station? We're like doing a so. good fellow's book now. It's gonna be great. Um, <laughs> like that one or Taxi Driver or Wolf of Wall Street are always on my on my rotation. Um, I, I don't know. It's a tough one. That's a really tough question. But if I had to pick my show, it would be The Sopranos, one hundred percent. Are you excited with the new movie coming out? The I've seen it. I've seen it two times. <laughs> <laughs> well, that answers that. <laughs> yeah, I saw it the day it came out in the theater with my dad. We had a good, we had a good time. Um, and then I rewatched it twice on HBO. So, uh, and my wife hasn't seen it, so we're, I'm probably gonna see it a fourth time by the end of the week. So, <laughs> just to give you a sense of how I feel about it. <laughs> I guess, Jesus. Yeah. It's a shame you don't have any passion for this. Well, you know, it's funny. You know, um, when people think comic books, they think superheroes naturally because they dominate the American market so much. Uh, and listening to your your choices in entertainment, you know, going more towards you know like crime drama and stuff. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm I'm thinking, well, that's kind of a, no. Wait a second, Dan doesn't do superheroes, so um, you know. Do you think that's one of the benefits of being in the market that you know you're in the independent market where you can do things that are closer to a passion project and things that are outside the mainstream and in along those lines, would you have any ambitions about going to a larger company and they say, okay, you get to have this, but it's a superhero title. Would you be willing to work on that? Yeah, for sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, I just I mean, my tastes tend to lean towards you know more. Um, I mean, I know Touching Evil is a little bit out there, but it's not, yeah. she's not a superhero. She's not wearing a cape or a costume. She's still got regular, you know, a regular person, regular problems kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I, I used to say this in my class too. It's like, um, I don't think somebody like me could have existed if I was born like 10 years earlier because, you know, a couple things. One, the taste in comics evolved to where you could do stuff like what I'm, what I like to do, right. but B, um, being able to print and publish on your own just to, to get that thing started until it can find a publisher. That wouldn't have happened if I started in like the early nineties, you know, like it was so tough to make a book uh, pre 2000 ish. Cause you didn't have print on demand. You didn't have um, the, uh, the acceptance acceptance in the culture, I think as much of uh, creator owned indie books. And, um, and yeah, people only got what, what came into the shop, you know? So that being said, now that I've got a little more, you know, of a established career in what I do, if, yeah, if I ever had the opportunity to work on like a big two book or like something like that, I'll totally, I would, I, I would find my angle in it. Hopefully they would like it, you know, but, um, I, I would definitely try to find my, my way into that. Well, and that's something I've said for a while that, you know, like I didn't write my first book until I was like in my mid fifties and I'm, yeah. 400, and I'm 400 now, but, uh, <laughs> but no, the, that you know, painting up in your, the painting up in your attic must be really just falling apart. Now you look, you look, uh, what, like much less than 400. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't look a day over three seventy five. Yeah, you're more like a three fifty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> thank you, but uh, thank you for the compliment. But no, uh, I tell people that a, a lot of the technology takes away the excuses for not creating. Yeah, so many, I'm sure you are like the rest of us. You get a lot of people saying, "I'd like to do what you do," yeah. you know. But the thing is, the aside from the fact that it takes time to get up to various levels, that um, the technology takes away the excuses for not doing it. You know, like you said, 30 years ago, we couldn't do this. You know, you, you would have to get like a print run of like, say, you know, what, 15,000, 30,000 comics. You'd have to go down to Sparta, probably Sparta, mm -hmm. Illinois to uh, get them printed or yeah. you know, probably the closest to you. Um, and then there's the problem of like how many ads in the comics buyer's guide do I take out? That's, mm -hmm. you know, the, but now, even with the limitations of social media that we're finding, it's still an easier way 
to get your message out than to wait for a buzz to pick up, you know, un, unaided, I guess I was what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And plus we've got elect, electronic ways to draw. We've got, you know, you don't have to have a Dick Blick store near you. Um, you, you know, you can find your tribe electronically rather than yeah. knocking on doors and stuff. So I think you made a great point about, you know, yeah. the technology has caught up with what we need and what we want, have always wanted it to do as far as creators go. It's definitely the best time to be a creator in, you know, modern existence. I mean, it probably will continue to get better, I would hope, but like it was never as good as it is like in this era that I've come up with as far as if you want to make something, there are ways now to do it. Usually, it's, you know, those doors would be closed to you um, unless you can get past the gatekeepers, but now there's far less gatekeepers. Um, doesn't mean there aren't any, but far, no. far less. No, that's true. And, you know, a lot, I, I talked to a number of people, their goal is not to get into any of the top 10 uh, publishers in uh, in uh, the previous catalog. In fact, a number of them don't even care if they get into the catalog or not. Yeah. I mean, you can, I know plenty of people, uh, you know, that make a, a, a living doing this full time and they don't chase those those particular aspirations. You know, it's just, well, and, and it's not even just about, you know, um, that they think they're above it or whatever. It's just, it's that they're, they know that if they follow the thing that they're passionate about, that they're going to sell that better and that they're going to be more true to, you know, their table. Cause when you go to table at these shows, you know, I think people have a good radar as to whether or not you're, um, you believe in what you're doing. You know, I don't necessarily need you, you don't need to be like, you know, crazy passionate about it and, 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 and in a fever pitch all the time. But I think when you see a table where they don't know where they're, you know, if they're supposed to be there or whatever, it, like it, it hurts, it hurts the, the creator inadvertently, you know, like all that stuff. And I don't blame them for, cause it's very intimidating. But when you see somebody who has something that they genuinely love doing and they're, then they uh, would do it for free if, 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 you know, if that was the case. Um, but they're out there at their table and they're pushing it. Like it attracts a different kind of energy and I think people who realize that realize that maybe they don't need to go to Marvel and DC. Maybe they can just do that lane and have a career, you know? Um, I know, like, uh, I'm not trying to suggest that you wouldn't do Marvel and DC, but um, but my friend Kaylin Smith, um, who does Plume and For Goodness Sake and um, a whole bunch of other stuff, she's got, she's got all of her stuff is pretty her own. Um, and her Kickstarters are, they murder. They're amazing, you know? Uh, and I don't know if she'd ever do a Marvel DC book, but in my mind, she doesn't have to because she's she does what she's passionate about and it shows and the, her fan base um, loves that about her, you know? They, they just go, yeah, Kaylin's making something, I'm sold. You tell me what it is later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just see, here's my check, just send it to me and I'll figure it out yeah. what the postman gets here, yeah. Exactly, yeah. I get that. Well, Cindy Kep, you remember Cindy Kep from when you were here earlier? Yeah. Uh, gave you all those great jokes. She, when the morning show, she does promotions. Like for me, a cool, good fellow with cool books. Thank you, hon. Thank you so much. And Volcana, if you like superheroines, also there. And Simple Swords, Fighting Axis. Check them out uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern on the, the Historical Fencing Guild channel. And Creepy Stuff and Nazis, the new book by John B. Pika. Please check them out. And, oh, we have a comment up. That's a good sign. And the Disappearing, the Dastardly Dingoes podcast with Brian Rodman. Uh, check them out every Tuesday. Check out last night's episode uh, with Eric Hawkins. It was awesome. And uh, Brian, you need to talk to Bri the Dan here about being on the Dastardly Dingoes. I would totally do that. Yeah. Brian, can I can I be a dastardly dingo, please? Yo, you will be dingoized immediately. <laughs> I am sure. I mean, they they've had me on a couple of times. They're, they're 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 aching for quality gas. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so you'll be a welcome uh a welcome uh addition to the show. And Amazonia, you want that from uh, from the Desto Small Press Publisher, 10 p.m. uh Eastern on Saturday nights. And that's another one, Dan. I'm gonna uh, point you to uh, mm -hmm. awesome. And for the Desto Small Press Publisher, hey, we were just talking about you, buddy. Uh, Jody McPhee asks, what are your thoughts on the departed good question i just was talking about the departed uh like last week because uh there's a sh there's a podcast called the rewatchables which i highly recommend for people who are like obsessed with 
you know, movies and, and whatnot. That's why it's so hard for me to pick, by the way. The other thing. I, I like so many movies. Um, but the, the rewatchables, they take one movie that they think is a rewatchable movie and they just break it down uh, over the course of usually about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, it's got really cool categories that really help. It really, by the time you're done with the podcast, you want to rewatch the movie again. So oh, nice. they've talked about The Departed twice now, which is a rare thing. They'll, they'll do that only for particular movies that they have more to say on. So they had an episode called The Departed. And then they had an episode called The Redeparted because they did it again. Um, and they they really, like, I, I sync up with their opinion quite a bit. I love that movie. Um, that being said, it's a roller coaster. Like, it's just, it's just constantly moving. It makes um, no sense in sometimes, and that's okay. Um, it's weird that, like, you don't get the the title uh, of the movie until 20 minutes into the movie. Like they do like a preamble that's almost completely unnecessary to the movie, but is highly entertaining. And then they're like, The Departed. And you're like, I've been watching this for 20 minutes and I haven't even seen the title card yet. What is happening right now? Um, Nicholson's insane. It's his last, basically like his last uh I mean, it's not his technically last performance, but it's definitely his last performance that I remember. Um, and then uh, Mark Wahlberg's amazing. One of the best uh, accents ever. <laughs> his, his, oh, and, and Damon too. And then DiCaprio. Oh man, I see. I Yeah, I love the movie. That's the short answer. Of it. But what you should do if you're really into The Departed is listen to those podcasts. Uh, it's the rewatchables. Find, go scroll through it and find the departed and find the redeparted. It's really, really fun. I'm writing this stuff down. This sounds too cool. Anyway, yeah. uh, I learned stuff on this show too. And Cindy Kep says, check out Neurosis, the new book by Amy Hale and Secret of Warriors. You want the warrior secret from Michaela Jade. Wow. It's awesome. And she's a poet. She knows it. That's Teresa Dunn. Get, check out her both volumes of Poetry Expressions. And Damien Waldron. I just saw that skunk. Love it. And Halloween comic and toy show, Quad Con Des Moines for, at, on October 30th for all the geekiness you need. Come on by and get a book and a dragon yes that's that's another thing you know the 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 benefits of celebrity dan have you got an amigurumi oh wow <laughs> it's okay to envy me uh, yeah so, I... <laughs> so and Jeez. even even the down to this right? so, oh, I... <laughs> so somebody made that for you huh cindy kep made that for me See, oh that's that. amazing isn't that cool that's super cool <laughs> I'm so Jeez. proud. I also have another one here that uh, Lynn Smith made for me. <laughs> so, so when the authorities say Brian point at the doll, I know which one I'm doing. So anyway, <laughs> so that, that, that's my collection. I keep them close at hand. They bring me comfort. Uh, so, and the historical fencing guild uh, at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. on Friday nights. You'll love it and go. Like comic related madness YouTube uh, to help pops get to one thousand. Hey, help me to get to a thousand too. Um, I'm I'm at sixty two percent of the way there, and if I can get to eleven hundred by the end of the, um, Halloween night, I will do a special twelve hour. Never mind the furthermore. So wow. man, I know I don't. Know. Yeah, seriously, I have no idea what's wrong with me, Dan. I really don't. I hope you have like a like a, a bedpan underneath there or something. <laughs> Well, we have the Hail Pail and the Pod Catheter from Rising Tide Industries. <laughs> the, oh the pod, yeah, the Pod Catheter speaks for itself, uh, but the Hail Pail was one night we did a, a clever title pending with Amy Hale, who is a downstate Illinois author. Okay. And um, uh, at one point, about 20 or so minutes in, she goes, I can't sit anymore longer. I got to go pee. And she just walked out of the frame. Um <laughs> So she she made a mark, if not a splash, on this show, and but she came back <laughs> later, and uh, we went on. So she has been um, we we have uh, been marketing the hail pail ever since. So. <laughs> Can I show you one that my buddy Austin made? Check please, please do. There's a little oh, Beardo. that's paper. Beardo as a paper figure. Oh my gosh, that is brilliant! Yeah, this guy does these custom ones. Um, you can, you, it, it, they're commissions basically. You can commission to do these. Uh, sure. 
his name is Austin. Um, his um, Instagram handle, which is what are, where I usually see him, um, is I believe it's like Oz. Yeah, it's A U S G E R C O. And I'll, I mean, I'll show you. I'll do you one better. Um, he also did a Touching Evil one with uh, Ada from Touching Evil. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's even got her missing the finger in there too, like on her left hand. Oh my gosh. Oh and my then gosh. he did a floppy cop. <laughs> <laughs> he's even floppy. Like he's like, he's oh my God, that's brilliant. That's cool. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. It's I'm so fun. Look him up. Yeah, look him up. He does, he does a ton of like um, standard, like Marvel DC characters you'd see or image characters. Uh -huh. um, but he does custom ones, and he also does just ones he likes, too. I think he did, like, a bunch of stuff from Ryan Brown's comic just because he really, like, God Hates Astronauts. Sure. Um, so the guy is just down for making whatever. Um, if you want to get one, you know, reach out to him, and he'll he'll do it. I wrote that down. Thank you, yeah. man. I appreciate sure. yeah, yeah. that. That's awesome. That is beautiful. I love the I love all the the community and all the the great creativity here. I really do. Yeah, and uh, hybrids. Don't forget Luke Stone Studios. Check that out. And Bear Publications for snazzy anthologies, books, and writing resources. Bear Publications also has published Cindy Kep's latest novel, Animal Eye, and her very first comic book that she wrote herself nice. based on that book. Uh, and it's gotten great reviews, Dan. It really has, 100%. And uh, Kick Zombies Out of Oz, you want Eric Hawkins' new book. Uh, all three issues, I believe, are available on Comixology. And don't take the sky away, Vermillion urges you. And I really want Shakespeare in Goodfellas, says the skunk rocker. <laughs> the Goodfellas. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Attend me, my mom says. And uh, that would be amazing. Oh, my God. The ex like the exact opposite of that Romeo and Juliet movie yeah. that came out here. It's like, you, <laughs> verily, you doth insult him a little bit. Yeah. And I can see, see, I can see like a whole series of these. Like, uh, what am I thinking? Scarface. You know, you know, you know the, the, thou hast the, met my little friend. You know, yeah. that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and Angels and Nebulizers, you need to go to brianrodman.com immediately. All right. And so since uh, Connie plugged me, Brian, plug Rising Tide. Nice. Go there. Go there. Uh, there. Brand new redesigned by Damian Walbrun, and you can sign up for my free monthly newsletter there. So, and Pulp Fiction Fun, go to Stormgate Press. And Shatner is on the ground and thrilled. So, I guess it was successful. I guess we're not talking about Shatner being like deep into the ground or anything because this is SpaceX. But, um, no, they, they've got a good record. I've, just, I've been seeing some of their preliminary launches that, okay, it's touchdown, boom. So, there's a reason why they're on number like. 11 or 12 now but anyway that's good news thank you john scarborough and i will be checking out armchair rocket science later to watch your commentary on it and cindy kept uh says you can get book reviews from land down under hyper sandy books on youtube there and oh there's a car auction going on in chattanooga right now and there are metric a ton of muscle cars down here how much stuff can we do <laughs> there's so much wow there's so much going on in the world <laughs> I know, and here we are trapped, right? <laughs> Dan's like, let me out of here. And Star <laughs> 76 for all of your vintage cartooniness. And City kept ran out of break, but don't forget to tip your host. Thank you. I have a, pa a Patreon page. And uh, bring Cookie home and sign for Rising Tides newsletter. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you so much. So, and we caught up with the comments, Dan. That doesn't happen very often here. So Yeah, that was wild. I, I felt like I was on a roller coaster ride. Like, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Does this happen? And this like, I, like, <laughs> this script, like oh, there's a book. Wait, I, I, I combined the t first part of the first title with the second part of the second title. Oh man, that was wild. <laughs> oh yeah, we we have we. Uh, I've learned to talk fast. I sound like the um, the uh, micro machines man. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm, I'm working up to that level. I'll just leave all all the vowels and. We can keep up on the show here. And we had one show. Actually, it was one night. It was a clever title pending. We were actually two hours behind in the comments. Oh my god! Yeah, and wow. but to me, that's a sign that it works because it's sure. you know kind of conversational, so it's all good. Sure. Um, now, speaking of all good, tell us about uh, Beardo. We haven't talked about Beardo yet. 
Yeah, Beardle's going great. Um, ever since I relaunched it on the Patreon last April, um, I've kept a pretty, a, a very regular schedule of posting new strips three times a week. Um, nice. Every now and then I might, you know, um, give myself a little leeway on that because I'll be at a con, but I'll always post content regardless of um, how busy I am because I have a ton of content. So, um, it's a really cool way for me to bring the series back because, you know, to be honest, comic strips are a tough sell sometimes. Like you don't always think of comic strips when you think of comics, you think of comic books and graphic novels. So um, to me, it's, it's a art form that I think doesn't get enough love. Um, but at the same token, it gets plenty of love on the Patreon. Like it, it's really awesome that I've got such a, great fan base i mean i'm up to like 212 subs on there nice uh, yeah and they're you know they're active on there too they're not just there you know for whatever other reason you could be but like they're you know they, they talk up the comment section and they tell me uh you know their thoughts on the on the strips and it's fun because i'm basically building volume six through the patreon like mm. I've, I've made over 200 strips at this point i think oh, nice. yeah i think i'm up, i think i'm past 200 now um and and then all kinds of other stuff like I have like a sketch club level where you can get an original sketch every month. Um, like for example, uh, actually here's one that I got to mail out. So it's one, it's one of those guys. I think his name is Boosh or something from Star Wars. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So like, um, it's one of those rare characters. Like I, it, it, some people give me some real challenging ones where I got to look it up. Um, like I don't know who that is. Um, <laughs> But it's been really, it's it's really fun, and I have no plans to stop because it's just been such a good. When it was uh, during the pandemic, like the worst parts of it, um, where we really couldn't go anywhere, like it kept me sane. You know, it was like, okay, I have a regular scheduled comic that I have to make three times a week. I have this avenue um, for talking on the blog, which is awesome. And, you know, we would share stories on there. Like I would, you know, if I was having a good day, I'd post about it. If I was having a bad day, I'd post about it. And people would chime in and say like how they're doing. And it was, you know, I know that, you know, they're paying to be there, but it, it felt like a community um, that again was special in a way that social media wasn't. So uh, yeah, I love it. And I just keep wanting to grow it more and more. Um, I basically post every day. Like it's, I'm, I'm very active on it. That's cool. Yeah, I've, I've got a Patreon page too. BK Morris. Yeah. Uh, or Brian K. Morris, excuse me. I was, I was going to say, wait, I think it's Brian K. Morris. Brian K. Morris. Oh, you know, that's how you find me there. But yeah, I, I currently I'm uh I did an experiment in uh, novel writing. Uh I'm a I'm an outliner. You know, I, I need to know where the next step is. Um yeah. so I don't write myself into a corner. And I did a first draft flash fiction novel. Oh, nice. And I gave myself some ground rules. No, Every chapter had to be no less than 1,500 words and no more than 2,000. Okay. And I didn't plot in my head. I wrote nothing down except for some character studies. And I did not plot any further than the next chapter. Awesome. And the uh, and the ending changed about four times on the way there. And I've been, I've been serializing that on my Patreon page. Um, and letting people see what I'm up to. It's a, it's kind of like a redo of the Black Terror. Oh, cool. But what if he were black? <laughs> really? Yeah, and why wouldn't we have heard about his adventures? Because then we were also delving into some like race relations during World War II and all. Kind of segueing yeah. into that. But uh, I, I'm look, I look for feedback from you know, my, my readers, and before I'm done, they are going to get to name some of the characters. That's really fun. Yeah, and I've, it's been very useful. It's been very helpful, and uh, uh, they seem to like it, so it makes me happy. So, you know, but you know, do you find that you know that having deadlines and having like you know the knowing the pressure of constant content coming out? Do you find that uh, does that aid your creativity, or do you find that uh, an impediment, like some people do? I'd say most of the time it's it's helpful. I think I think deadlines are good. Um, there are times when it's frustrating, you know, because, um, you know, sometimes for me at this at this stage of, of what I'm doing, um, I sometimes bite off more than I can chew. 
in terms of like tackling multiple projects. So the deadline becomes a concern when you haven't been able to give the thing the time that it deserves. Right. But like, if I have given something the time that it deserves, there's a point where you have to let go of it. And, um, my background, at least in the early parts of my career was, uh, in newspapers. So like when Beardo was first out, it was in uh, a couple a handful of newspapers, nice. but I had those deadlines. I mean, granted I was doing, you know, one strip that I would post to all of those papers, but, um, but I would do five, it's actually six a week. I had to do six strips a week. So it was Monday through Friday and then a Sunday strip. Wow. And um, that really conditioned me to get to the point, you know, to be like, okay, you have to, what are you trying to say here? All right, say it already, you know? And, um, and that helped me quite a bit. Uh, I don't think I would have been so um, prolific with it had I had no deadlines, you know? I've got five volumes of it and I'm working on a six that that gives you any indication. So like that's, that's a lot of content and that's not the only thing I do. So it wouldn't have happened. I'm, I'm positive if it wasn't for deadlines. Mm -hmm. It's good discipline. It's very good. discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Historical fencing guild on YouTube says, please hit the like. Yes, please do. Please like this broadcast and share it. So other people can be exposed to what this great man is doing. And a couple questions here. Brian Raman asked fun question for Dan. What is the most interesting con experience you've ever had? Oh man, I've got so many. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I mean, do you want like, I have to call the lawyers? That's yeah. Do you want like know. good experiences or like negative experiences? Like, yeah. um, <laughs> or like what the hell am I doing here? Experiences, yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. So. Oh, it's tough. Like I have a lot of fun, right? Like obviously like there's been a lot of, um, you know, friendships made through conventions and um, yeah, I mean, so one of the, see, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. That's the problem. <laughs> like, I'm trying to, I'm, 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 I have like a Rolodex of stories going through my head and I'm like, no, but then someone will get their feelings hurt. So um, I will say, let me just say like really cool experiences. Um, I, uh, I met, um, oh shoot. Who's the guy who, I'm trying blanking on his name. Who's the guy who played Flash Gordon? Sam Jones. Sam Jones. Thank you. Yes. Um, he's awesome. Yeah. Um, actually I can think of a couple things that happened. Okay. Now I got a couple. Okay. And they're all harmless now. So, um, <laughs> I was trying to find ones that didn't end up like with somebody's feelings hurt. So, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so one was Sam Jones, right? So I'm in Texas for that show, and Sam Jones is there signing, and he's got a big display, and um, and I have a friend um, whose name is Mike, uh, and it turns out Mike was right about this. So I want to be clear: like Mike says, he knows Sam Jones, like, and um, uh, he said, if if you're down there and you want to see Sam Jones, let me know. I'll I'll call his people and you can just walk up and say hi and get a picture instead of, you know, waiting in the line. Um, and for me too, that's kind of, I'm not trying to be a line cutter, but I am like stuck to a table when I'm there. So it's like, if I leave and I have to be in line for like an hour, it's not good for my business. So right. it turned out my, um, my cousin and his daughter who's fully grown. Um, they love flash Gordon and they wanted to see him. So I'm like, well, I got this hookup. And so I, I talked to Mike and Mike, um, uh, sends a message to his people or, or whatever, and they cannot figure out who Mike is. Um, and they're like, I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know this guy. And so I'm on the phone. Mike, I'm like, you know, it's okay. And he's like, no, walk up there. Just walk up and say, Mike, so-and-so, I'm not going to say his name, um, knows you. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to like break all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> so like I take my cousin and my cousin's like, we really don't have to do this. Like, I don't want to cause a scene. I'm like, well, Mike's very insistent. So let's do this. And, um, and so we walk, we cut the entire line because Mike is so determined to prove that he was right. We get up to the front and Sam Jones is there. And I'm like, do you know, Mike? So-and-so he's like, what are you doing? He had no idea what I was talking about. So now, now everyone lines looking at us like, uh, did the guy just cut the line? And so we got the photo up anyway, because he was super nice. He's like, just take a picture of me. I don't care. 
And then later on, he figured out who Mike was. He's like, oh, yeah, I know him. And, and he said hi through Mike. So it was true. But at the time, I looked like a total idiot. And um, <laughs> and the whole line was like, this guy, you know. Um, the only other thing I can think of that's an innocuous story is um, I accidentally bumped into Chris Lloyd while going for a run in Philadelphia. And um, and he was very nice, although I felt really bad because I did geek out a little bit. I don't normally do that, but I was like, it's Christopher Lloyd. Oh, yeah. And um, and I was soaking wet because not only was I running for like oh, quite a while, I usually try to get like one run in at a show, mm -hmm. but it had been raining. So like I looked like a hot mess and I was like, can I get a picture with you, please? You know, my wife is going to love this. I'm going to love this. I was blaming it on my wife, but it was really me. Um, and he was very nice and he took the picture, but I could tell that I had done something there that I felt bad about later because I had now drawn attention to him. Right. And, um, and then of course he was mobbed by a bunch of people. Oh, no. I, felt, I felt really bad. I was like, I'm so sorry. He's like, it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Well, yeah. Cookie, my wife got to meet uh, Sam Jones one time and she went up to him and said, you know, we love Flash Gordon, we loved you in um, My Chauffeur. You know, okay. that wonderful movie. Um, and um, that, that's where we have the line, we we were bad. Very bad. But anyway, uh, she said, what we really love you in is the spirit. And he reached under the table and pulled out a an 8 by 12 of him and Nana Visitor from the spirit and signed it. Oh, really? Yeah! Oh, wow. That's cool. That's super cool. Yeah, we've got it hanging in our dining room. Was, and, and and Cookie said he was just such. I was at the booth, of course, but you know she was like, he was, he was so nice. He's you know seemed so unaffected. You know. Yeah. By, you know by and I would call him a cultural icon with uh with Flash Gordon. So. Definitely, yeah. Like you know the fact that there was like basically three generations of people there. Me, and my cousin, who's my cousin's. He's not that much older than me. He's about ten years older than me. Um, and my my uh, cousin's daughter, who was like 20, I think, at the time. Uh -huh. And we all, you know, we all love Flash Gordon for different reasons. I think that was pretty cool, you know. Yeah, that is amazing. And Rick, uh, Historical Fancy Gill says, by the way, please hit the like. Yes, please do. Please support us. And also please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we're back, says Carl Witzman. And it was an amazing flight, says Joe Dog McKeel, of Stupid O'Clock. 11 p.m. Eastern on Saturday nights and 9 p.m. on uh, Thursday nights. And stay tuned for Dan Hollowfield's Last Man Standing Great Geeky Conversation. Rick Bradley asks, any other projects in the near future? The, for me, uh, yeah. Um, well, they don't care what I do. <laughs> um, you well, see. you know, wrapping up Touching Evil has been the, the focus of, like, basically through the rest of my year. Like, I'm, you know, doing this Kickstarter to put the book out and, um, have all the, you know, the things that surround it. So um, once I'm done with Touching Evil, uh, I think one thing I know for sure that I want to focus on is putting out Beardo Volume 6. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and then beyond that in comics, like, I'm actually not sure. Like, I, I know obviously I'll be baking something, but um, I've been sort of debating on... Oh, floppy cop! Yeah, <laughs> I do want to do more floppy cop. Yes, that's true. Um, that's something that yeah, Seth and I've been talking about. We got to figure out our angle into a, a third volume. Seth and I actually also were trying to work on a, a new project, which I, I can't talk about. But like, um, we want to hit a, a different kind of vibe, um, but also collaborate in the same kind of way that we've you know that people have come to expect. Um, but yeah, it's tough to say because, you know, in comics, it's like you start thinking about something and it might not come out for like six months to a year. Right. So like, um, I know that there'll be several comics, you know, in the fire and also hopefully like another kid's book or two, like nice. to be honest, like the big success that I had in, in 2020, 2021, um, was in the, the children's book category because A Thousand Knows with uh, DJ Corchin as the author and um, me as the illustrator um, went to like number one on the Barnes and Noble kids charts and like cracked the top 10 of the Barnes and Noble charts overall. Like, wow. So Great. that, yeah, that was definitely um, awesome. And then also very helpful during a very uncertain time. 
So then we followed it up with uh, Do You Speak Fish, uh, which just came out last week. Um, it, it, it launched on the, the 5th of October, same day as the Kickstarter, actually. Mm, wow. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm thinking that there'll be some more stuff in the future with that stuff, too. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that and then also I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that um, I make music. So I have a uh, album that came out in 2020 uh, called Bad Ideas. I actually released it on vinyl too, with along with like streaming. Um, but I have a second album coming out called Fun Times Ahead that uh, is I'm very proud of and is um, set to come out. I'm hoping by the end of the year. Uh, cool. Definitely streaming. I mean, vinyl is taking longer now because everything takes longer to make now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Everything's but, backing up. Yeah, uh, it's tough, but uh, so I'm definitely going to be busy. If that helps with the answer there. <laughs> That's good. Long That's, well, you know, it's like I tell people, you know, you talk about taking on more assignments than you can handle. It's like I can still remember, I tell people I can still remember a time when nobody cared how much free time I've got on my hands. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, That's true. so you, you, you take the, you take the jobs cause you never know when they're going to come back again. Right. Yeah. I, oh man. I took on like in that April of 2020 when it, you know, it was really getting pretty bleak, you know, yeah. What was cool was a lot of my people reached out and were like, you know, I've been meaning to get a commission, you know, why not now? And that carried me through the spring, basically. Like, that was kind of what uh, salvaged my spring because I lost, you know, so much income with uh, the conventions being gone. And, you know, so, yeah, but right now, I mean, I am definitely focused on this this Kickstarter. Like, that's going to be the next three months of my stuff. Kickstarter? Yeah. <laughs> can I tell you about some of the stuff you can get in it? Yes, my own. I was going to ask. Please talk it up, Dan. Yes. So um, for the uninitiated, you can get all three volumes in there. There's um, the, the the volume three hardcover is obviously the 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 most sought after uh, tier because it's the, the most you know it's the thing we're all here for. Um, but you can also get volumes one and two as an add on, or even there's a package deal where you can get all three of them. Um, there's also going to be, and you'll see it in the campaign uh, mock-up of it, a slipcase that collects all three volumes into a nice presentation. That, to me, um, is very special, especially for, I mean, obviously for anybody who's just like loves to display their books. But um, for me, that means a lot because that means that, you know, that thing represents uh, eight years of my life in a way. You know, like that's, um, that's a nice, like, uh, feather on the cap of, of this whole saga. Um, you can also get, there's a tarot deck that I had made for the second campaign that is now available as an add-on. You can get uh, remarks in your book, which means an original drawing in the interior of the book. So like, uh, I you, there's several examples on the campaign. You can actually see what I did in volume two, but you would like in this opening, um, this page of the opening of the book, I do a full color uh, drawing of something touching evil related and it really customizes the book um, in a way that makes it, you know, even more special than, than it already will be. Um, we've also unlocked uh, two stretch goals and are about to unlock a third, which means that now everybody who uh, backs the project at a physical level um, in any way gets the uh, digital wallpaper for their, um, for their book, uh, for the for, uh, touching evil. Um, they get their book autographed, and uh, once we crack this third one, the front cover will be foil embossed, uh, much like this one was from volume one. If you can see her on there, yeah, um, this this is all uh, a foil embossing, and that's only for backers. Like the any other copies you'd see of it would have that as just white. Um, and then if it keeps going, and this is where you might really perk your ears up for my floppy cap and Beardo fans. Um, it starts getting into very interesting territory with these stretch goals because there comes a point where you get a bonus touching evil story uh, as first as a PDF. And then if we unlock it even further, it gets included into the book. And then um, a very special comic gets made. If we hit like 26 K to three or 30 K uh, there's a touching evil Beardo floppy cop crossover comic that I'm going to make. <laughs> And if we if we if we unlock the base level of it, it's, it gets delivered as a PDF. If we hit the top level of it, it becomes a, an actual physical comic that comes separate from the book in your package, and is 
only for backers. It's not something that's going to be made out into the rest of the world. So um, it's there's a lot of really cool stuff to get in there. And at this point, if you back, you know you're getting all this extra stuff for free that's going to be tacked on. Um, there's bookmarks, there's stickers, there's all kinds of other stuff that just you just get because you're in the, the campaign. And um, and we have until November 5th, but I would really love to unlock these things as soon as possible. Because that moment, you know how it is with Kickstarter, that momentum builds more momentum. Yeah. Very, very cool. And while we have you here, uh, how can people follow you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Beardo Comics, all one word, no spaces or, or dashes, Beer, at Beardo Comics. Um, you can find me on uh, Facebook uh, under Dan Doherty. Um, I even have a special group now that I made called What's Dan Doherty Up To Now, <laughs> where it's, it was an easier way to get through the, the algorithms. Um, yeah. And I post there very, you know, fairly regularly. Um, and then with the Patreon, it's also patreon.com um, backslash Beardo Comics. So, yeah, you definitely can find me. Um, I even have like a band camp page for my, my music, too, that you can go to. That's just under Dan Doherty. That's fantastic. That is great. Well, Dan, thank you, as always, for being here. And you have an open invitation anytime. Thank you. This is so fun being on your show. It's really, it's so much more like relaxed, but it, it moves. It's like, it's fun talking to you, but I feel like, I feel like I'm, I, I, if I just ate, like, I feel like I'm hungry already because I just did a full workout because <laughs> I learned so much about so many other projects. And then I, I had to keep up with the mental uh, wit of you. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> I know this is this is a tougher show than people realize. <laughs> I think in that head is just more brain. It just keeps yeah, it, it, it just keeps the top of my head warm. As yeah. Well as it is. So, uh, but anyway, Dan, thank you so much for being here. I yeah, appreciate you, you so much, and please stick around so I can say goodbye to you properly. You got it. All right. Thank you again, Dan Doherty. Great creator. Great guy. And again, please check out this uh, campaign. I'm going to be contributing to it. And uh, when you see the, all the good stuff he's got there, you're going to be thrilled. And there's a lot of great content on the way. Also check out his Patreon page if you would. And I think you should. I really do. And something else to check out is... Um, our sponsor for today, and that is Plasma Fire Graphics. Plasma Fire Graphics, when the look of your book matters to you. When you're looking for great cut wraparound covers for your novels and uh, graphics to help sell it on social media, as well as beautiful book trailers like the one you just saw, you got to get in touch with Jeffrey Hayes at Plasma Fire Graphics. Check out their Facebook page. Check out PlasmaFireGraphics.com where you can ask for his very affordable rates. Plasma Fire Graphics, when the look of your book matters to you because it matters to your, your readers. And also, uh, please check out... Um, our Patreon page. Uh, you can get your name on this card here for being one of my supporters for just a dollar a month. And five dollars a month gets you uh, peeks at various uh, works in progress progress that I've got going. Also, we've got a blog that we do once a week. And uh, inspired by Dan, I need to do more now. I'm 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 a lazy cuss. But anyway, if you want to cheer me on, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Brian K. Morris and find out what we can offer you. And offering you entertainment seven days a week, that's the Rising Tide Broadcast Network. Please go and check out Armchair Rocket Science, where you saw, you could see William Shatner, actor William Shatner, shot into space and brought back to Earth. I noticed they were all wearing blue uniforms forms i wonder if shatner came back rocky and orange the only way to find out is to check out armchair rocket science also check out tonight the um the truth mongers with ted davies and glenn b fleming will be on 
Definitely don't want to miss that. So uh, check us out seven days a week and please give our Facebook page a like. And with that, I think we are done for the day. Thank you again to Dan Doherty for uh, showing up this morning. And Friday, we will be back with more Fall to Raw. And we hope that you have an excellent hump day. And it's also New Comics Day. So check out your local comic monger and see what's on the stand. So as always, folks, thank you for being here. Thank you for being um appreciative of Dan Doherty and check out his uh, uh, Kickstarter campaign if you would please and as always folks stay smart, stay safe wash your hands and never apologize for being awesome. Have a great day everyone, we'll see you Friday uh, tomorrow night on Comic Book Spectrum at 7pm Eastern and then again on Nevermind but furthermore Friday morning at 10 take care everyone Thank you for watching Nevermind the Furthermore, a Rising Tide Broadcast Network production. If you enjoyed any part of this show, please give it a like or a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and consider becoming one of our Patreon supporters. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Nevermind the Furthermore. <laughs>